Hello again, everybody, and welcome to this new edition of our Pennywise podcast. I'm your host, Terry Barr from Lee Enterprises. So happy to have you with us. Want to ask you, though, do you have a 401k? And if you do, what if you could have access to Bitcoin, cryptocurrency, as an investment choice in your retirement account? That's what we're talking about today. What an interesting option. And Alana Benson, Alana is an investing writer for NerdWallet. She's joining us today and she's going to take us uh, walking through this whole potential idea. I think some people might get really excited about this, Alana. I think so too. Yeah, I'm excited to talk about it. Great. Okay, let's start at the very beginning. What is cryptocurrency? (laughs) Well, I'll first just say I am not a financial advisor and this is not personalized investment advice. So it's just general advice. If you need to talk to a financial advisor, it's not a bad idea and they can help you with your personal situation. But you can think of cryptocurrencies as similar to other types of currencies, even like the US dollar. One of the biggest differences, obviously, is that cryptocurrencies are digital. And just like paper currencies, digital currencies have to keep track of their transactions, just like you'd keep track of your receipts. But cryptocurrencies do this via a technology called the blockchain, and it's built in a way that's difficult to hack, and it can't be controlled by a single party, such as a government or a bank. That's why a lot of times you hear it called decentralized currency. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. So if I sent my friend some Bitcoin and the blockchain would just register that transaction and then my friend could hold on to it, invest it, spend it. So really cryptocurrency is essentially a regular currency. It's just utilizing a very specific type of technology. So crazy. And I know people are are really interested in this right now, but you hear the word crypto. (laughs) I I guess you shouldn't worry that it's anything weird. This is a real thing. It is. And it's okay to be confused by it. I I say a lot. My fiance once said to me, it's inherently cryptic. It's right there in the name, (laughs) cryptocurrency. And I say, you know, you're right. It's, it's totally cryptic and it's hard for people to understand. So if it's something that's confusing, no one should feel bad about that. Okay, good. I, that's why I'm here with you today. So thank you. So let's talk a little bit more then about the possibility of a uh, cryptocurrency being a choice in your 401k retirement account. What is pushing this idea? I think one of the biggest things is the growing popularity around cryptocurrencies. Mm-hmm. And several years ago, this was a niche idea. It was not something that the everyday investor knew about. And now it's become so much more popular. It's in the news and either people own cryptocurrency or they've heard about it. It's just a lot more in more traditional financial institutions to push for this and get, give the people what they want if it's cryptocurrency. So last week, Fidelity Investments announced that it will be offering investors access to Bitcoin as an investment choice through their 401k accounts. Was that a surprise? I, I, I mean, should all of us think, <laughs> what? What is happening? You know, I I think if you're in the industry, people have seen a lot of movement towards this, you know, PayPal and other bigger name agencies are doing things with cryptocurrency these days. Um, But it is a bit surprising to see cryptocurrency offered through such a traditional retirement investment vehicle as the 401k. I mean, 401ks typically are supposed to really safeguard your retirement dollars. And cryptocurrency is so volatile that some folks may not feel comfortable with that amount of risk in their 401k. And, you know, when you talk about um, Fidelity, I think everybody knows Fidelity Investments and that Fidelity name. That's kind of a legacy brand. Um, Does this mean others could follow? And and I wonder, like, how sure are they that they're actually going to do this? So it's seeming like a pretty solid decision. They came out, they announced that there will be access to Bitcoin later on this year. Uh, There are no guarantees that everyone will have access. This is something that your employer will actually have to decide if they will give access to their employees. Um, And so just because Fidelity said to offer it does not mean that every 401k holder is going to get access to 
Okay. Oh my goodness. Labor. So, yeah. Yeah. If you have a 401k and they do come to you and say, do you want to try it? Um, I mean, what, what are you hearing as far as other people saying, um, watch out for this? So the Department of Labor has already come out and advised extreme caution uh -huh. around this kind of investing, um, but everyone is different. And I think the, the most important thing is that you have to gut check yourself and say, how, ask yourself how you'll feel if you see a very, very sudden drop in your retirement account from crypto, because crypto can be so volatile. Will you say, okay, I need to pull my money out right now? Or will you say, I'm comfortable with this, I can emotionally handle it, and I can just ride it out? So that's, I think, a really important decision. Okay. And, and um, who could consider this? Where do you need to be in your 401k retirement planning to be able to be okay with trying this? So again, I am not a financial advisor, <laughs> and everyone's financial situation is different. Yeah. That being said, a lot of times financial advisors typically don't want people to have a large percentage of their portfolio in very risky investments, such as individual stocks or cryptocurrency or NFTs or anything like yeah. Most advisors really recommend people stick with low cost, broad index funds or mutual funds, things that will get you exposure to a lot of different industries and kind of help safeguard your portfolio against volatility. And instead, if you're excited about these things, you can tolerate a lot of risk in your investment portfolio, you know, such as having many, many years to go until retirement. It could be something to explore using a smaller portion. But again, everyone's personal financial situation will differ. And even if you check some of those boxes, if you have many years to go before retirement, if you're the kind of person who will see a large drop in your portfolio and, and freak out, you know, it, it may not be something that's right for you. And there's a lot of other factors that go into that as well. Okay. Wow. I guess it's going to be fascinating to look ahead and see what happens down the road when this really does come to fruition. And again, right now we know it's fidelity that's kind of leading the charge here. So we'll see what happens. What, what do you think is the bottom line with all of this? The bottom line is that 401ks are really meant for your retirement money. And while we do want to grow that over time, you may not necessarily want to risk it. And one really important thing to consider is that the fees for cryptocurrency through a 401k may be a lot higher than those for the more traditional index funds or mutual funds that you might have access to, or even target date funds. So it, consider whether those higher fees eating into your bottom line is going to be something to take it into account as well. Okay. Anything we missed? This is such a deep topic. <laughs> <laughs> it really is. Yeah. I would just say, really think about your own personal situation yeah. and think about the fact that a lot of times investing is supposed to be boring. Your money is supposed <laughs> to grow slowly <laughs> over time and chasing those big wins can result in big losses as well. And you really want to safeguard your retirement funds. It's such an important thing to have. Yeah. And so I'd, I'd advise people to think very cautiously uh, when it comes to exploring alternative investments in their 401k. That is a perfect way to end it. Oh my goodness. Alana Benson with Nerd Wallet. She's an investing writer there. Thank you so much for walking us through this. What an interesting conversation. Thanks, Alana. Anytime. Thanks for having me. Yeah. And if you want to hear any of our other Pennywise podcasts, you can find those all wherever you enjoy listening to your podcasts. Thanks for joining us for this one. And we'll see you again next week.